to introduce myself. I'm John Laker. I'm one of the directors of Marlow Energy Group, and I will be your MC today. Um, welcome everybody who is here. Uh, please, can I therefore introduce uh, Kevin Slack? Um, as you can see on the slide in front of you, um, he's a director of Green Space Architects, but he's going to tell you more about that in a minute. Uh, over to you, Kevin. Yeah, so um, could we put the slides up, please, um, Michaela? Good evening, everybody. Uh, so, yeah, my name is Kevin Slack, a director of Green Space Architects. Uh, we have a base in. Uh, okay. And uh, next slide, please. And I'm going to talk to you about uh, where you go to from where your home is uh, to where we can get it to. Um, personally, I have a lot of wide range of experience across all sorts of sectors, but since I started my own business in 2010, we've focused on uh, houses and housing. Uh, terribly important, particularly the retrofit side to bring the existing 25 million houses, not all us uh, on our own, of course. Uh, up to um, uh, a high energy and low carbon standard. Um, we do say we're underpinned by sustainable design principles because I've been to many projects where they've got a fantastic ventilation strategy and a fantastic passive solar gain, but you can't see out the windows because they face north or or uh, you can't read by daylight because there there's can't be too much glass in that room. So we like to get a balance between between uh, performance and uh, and architectural sensibilities of in the end. I think next slide, please. Um, achieving, sorry, Michaela, Michaela, um, that's next slide. Um, that we want you to all live in beautiful homes. That's your version of beautiful, you know, so that's what um, people will look after and 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 truly love their their homes. Um, so and what your version of beautiful is, um, but it's got to be it's got to be warm. It's got to be affordable to run. It's got to be uh, low maintenance and it's also got to work in terms of uh, its layout and things. But in the end, we have to we aim at trying to make them beautiful. Next, please. Now we do this uh, both on new build where it's a bit easier and existing buildings where what we call a fabric first. So what we're trying to do is give your home uh, a big warm jacket, if you like. Um, so the roof walls and, and ground floor are as um, well insulated, but also airtight as possible so there are no drafts and uh, infiltration in it so uh, and when you then uh, um, when we have um, we also have to get rid of cold bridges so that's where it where, like say a piece of concrete goes from outside to inside it creates a cold surface on the inside so we're trying to deal with that and then when we've got this big jacket you have to ventilate anyone who's gone out and got you know, got hot in 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 a in, in an exceedingly warm coat. It just gets a bit damp inside, and the same happens to your building. So ventilation is something we do terribly badly here, and even with a well insulated house, if you're not ventilating properly, and we have a preference for uh, mechanical ventilation with heat recovery, um, it's still going to create mould and bad bad air. So we there are various standards we can see here which we can apply both to new build and existing existing um, buildings and we have this idea of, of of moderating the climate so if you're in a very hot climate you keep it cool if you're in a very cold climate you keep it warm and it's really coming down to what we call a new a new normal as soon as you move away from uh, brick and block cavity walls um, gas fired radiator systems and, and, and trust rafter roofs. There are about a thousand permutations, but there are some fundamentals we can get to. So U values, if uh, that's the, the amount of heat that can travel through uh, a wall or a window or a roof um, down to this value of 0.1. The numbers may not mean in very much to some of you, but basically this is the sort of target we have again, both for new build and existing. Um, 
making high performance windows. So double glazing is is OK. Um, we still fit double glazing quite a bit, but sometimes we're moving to triple glazing these days, but also fitting it so that the edges of the windows are also airtight around there, that there, there aren't gaps and we manage where the heat comes in and out um, with ventilation, say minimising the cold bridging. And then we meet the remaining demand with uh, energy efficient sources. So we've all heard about heat pumps. Um, we do get, and I'll show you shortly, um, to a point with particularly new build where we don't actually need a space heating system. Um, it's just your body heat, cooking, bathing, switching the computer on, a bit of solar gain from uh, the sun when it shines um, is enough to, to keep the space warm. Um, people still don't believe us and still put um, a, a heating system in, but um, there's got one chap, which again I'll show you, which is um, He's had a, been through three winters now and not actually turned his heating on. You don't have to be on a low income or fixed income for that to be attractive. Next, please. So with new build, it uh, is a bit easy. You can use these on extensions um, as well, but uh, it basically falls if you are thinking about a new home. Then um, this goes a little bit, well, quite a long way beyond the building regs. But there are basically two choices, timber based systems or concrete based systems. Um, the timber systems are um, include uh, what are called SIPS panels, which are structural insulated panels, um, which are two sheets of board with insulation um, between. Um, the passive frame is taking two bits of timber and filling the gap with usually with cellulose fibre, which is like um, ripped up newspapers, if you like, uh, very, very uh, low carbon, uh, very high performance uh, solution or what are called closed panel timber frames. So you may have seen timber frames made out of sort of four by two, four by two, five by two um, uh, sections. These are actually made in a factory and come to site as whole wall panels. Uh, you get a much, much higher standard by building off site. Uh, on the uh, concrete side, it's called insulated concrete formwork. So that is either you may have seen, if you watch Grand Designs, you may have seen uh, polystyrene blocks that they fill with concrete and sometimes they burst. Um, that uh, so projects like New Dura or Jackon. Uh, then there are the mineralized wood fibre. So this you may have heard of Durasol, for instance, which is a bit like shredded wheat if you like um, strips of timber covered in concrete and more formed into blocks which again you pour concrete inside and there is a panel they based version of that next please and with those um there is no real look to ek design if you wanted to look like a georgian a georgian cottage you could do that if you want it to look like a farm you could do that if you want to look at like the grandest grand design uh, you wished for it could look like that. Some people want to be demonstrably green, so people know they have an eco house, but one of the most eco houses we've got does look like a Georgian farmhouse. Uh, this is the one that has no um, no space heating demand, although he has put this small LPG boiler in. Uh, a company called NBC uh, based in Gloucester produced this twin frame, which has already got passive house standard. Now, passive house is one of the standards you, can, you may have heard of. There is um, uh, a retrofit version called Enerfit. Um, and this this really takes everything, air tightness and insulation to as far as you need to in order to um, have that warm jacket. And the idea of the warm jacket actually keeps the heat out in the summer as well as keeping the cold out or keeping the heat in in the winter uh, works both ways. And this one, even in the top centre with the pink there, it actually has a polystyrene uh, ground floor slab as well, which means there's no uh, the pink part is or purple is uh, higher density polystyrene, which means there's no no cold bridge to the ground even. And then a the minimum amount of concrete, the the hatched area in the centre um, is um, a, a, a small amount of concrete as you get. Concrete, unfortunately, is still the only thing that really does what it does. You might hear of hempcrete and other concrete substitutes, but they're still a little way off being mainstream yet while they are trying to decarbonize it. So with new build, <clears throat> relatively easy. Next, please, Michaela. 
this is uh, an ICF house, again, completely different shape, completely different look. Uh, this is made up of uh, mineralized wood fiber panels, um, but it's got a huge um, integrated uh, solar array, uh, big battery and an air source heat pump. Um, and uh, it could look like it's right. So part of it looks, it's got timber frame in it, got, got um, uh, brickwork and, and slated roofs. The rest is got a sort of a, a, a standing seam metal, which is reflective of the, there's a barn across the river, the other side that, uh, that, that, that it was, it's kind of inspired by and the materials kind of update that. But as you can see, the EPC, as built EPC, when it was completed uh, uh, a few months ago, has actually gone beyond them. I mean, EPCs go from 0 to 100. Anything above that means you're a net exporter of energy. So not only are they, uh, are they energy efficient, they're actually um, positive con contributions back to, uh, back to the grid, meaning it creates more energy. So again, new build, relatively easy if you're not doing it. It's not rocket science, this is the thing. So next, please. Uh, this is just section through the level of detail you have to, and you've got to have uh, effectively an air tightness champion because air, air tightness is as about as important as, as insulation, that you stop the draft, you stop the leakage in and out. And um, we actually, you can't quite see it on here, but there's a line that runs all the way around the outside, around to the windows and everything. And somebody on site has to make sure that is maintained. So you've got this, Breathable. Usually, it's not. It's not like living in a plastic bag that 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 moisture can pass through it, uh, so it, so the walls breathe. But you then have to meet that with a mechanical ventilation system, which recovers the heat before it leaves the building. Next, please. But. Most of you probably have something else, so you might have on the left there a Victorian house something perhaps from the 60s or 70s a more modern a more modern house or something very odd that that, that could be a listed building or or something that doesn't really fit into those sort of broad categories and all kill it and what we find is people literally they just don't know where to start so um if we go next please so here this is a uh a 1956 bungalow uh, actually backs onto Highgate Cemetery, uh, one of the Monty Python cast live next door. Very interesting. Um, and they've done a, in fact, the lady's father designed it um, and she grew up there. And um, we've done the effectively the basic thing. So we're trying to get that warm jacket over it. So uh, at a basic level, we've got um, really good windows, beautifully fitted and, and airtight. Um, when it was first done, they 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 were still getting drafts, and we had a um, a, a thermal imaging um, company come in who also look at uh, air tightness as well. And they did us a report. We could see exactly where the problems were, and they basically hadn't sealed underneath those full height windows. Made a huge difference to it. But then we've just put ordinary cavity wall insulation in, and on the right there, that's um. um 300, uh, 350 mil, which is uh, what, 14, 14 inches of uh, insulation in three layers that goes across between the joists and across. So you're always trying to cover up the air paths. And there they actually just put a little walkway and not they intend to put stuff up there, but just put this walkway on something called loft legs, which just gives them access through the pit, mainly so they can inspect the uh, or keep an eye on the on the inside of the building uh, from there, and that and because it became airtight, we actually installed a, a mechanical ventilation system, and this is typically a plan you get from them. The the um, the blue is air coming in that comes through, which actually takes the heat from the outgoing air. Don't actually mix; they have to uh, a plate heat exchanger where half half. Are, are for the incoming and half for the outgoing air. And then the red is where we're extracting from the kitchen, um, WC and shower room, uh, bathroom, um, to take the, the air out again. And and that, um, th that then makes sure you've got a good quality of air. It also works very well if you're on a main road or something and you can't ventilate to the front. And that is really a basic level, but the lady still spent, ooh, <laughs> um, 
uh, getting on for twenty thousand pounds you know just getting it to the right standard but that means her heating bills have plummeted from where she was and it is that equation that's really important next please so um this is actually my own house and we took it on as a complete wreck uh you could see out of the roof uh, from inside, could leave footprints in the floorboards, had a rudimentary electric, rudimentary plumbing, grade two listed. Um, we replaced the windows where we could, uh, with, they allowed us to put double glazing in, uh, others were weather stripped. We, uh, we got a grant from British Gas at the time um, to, for, for the energy improvements, it's, that's not so much there now. But we put uh, four inches, 100 mil of internal wall insulation, uh, about 12 inches in the floor and uh, 18 inches in the attics and uh, we've just had the EPC done it was had an EPC of one when we when we took it over uh, it's actually got uh, a low B at the moment which is quite something for a, uh, a listed building and we've got uh, we sized everything for a heat pump but at the time it was cheaper to put a gas boiler or in fact two gas boilers in and uh, with underfloor heating and a few radiators but the mechanical ventilation again has made a huge difference and we really once you get to a certain level of air tightness you have to do this so even if you have got so and that's a picture of our kitchen which was just stripped back to brickwork so we were allowed to put a modern kitchen back into uh, into that space other rooms have still got cornices and things but what you can't see is all the pipe work and things for the uh, mechanical ventilation and even if you do live in a, you know, a beautiful period house uh, or just a historic lovely old house it, it, it can still be um, beautiful on the outside beautiful on the inside uh, with the right approach next please um, that again on the right is similar thing that, that we've got on uh, the uh, mechanical ventilation system we actually dropped the ceiling in the in the hallway uh, to accommodate most of the pipe work and then the heat exchangers were tucked away in service rooms and uh, we managed to insert it everywhere into the um, into the house and we think it's the single thing that makes our house cheap to run uh, without under a refurbishment next please uh, this is slightly different again you might have this as a fairly um, a fairly standard developer house um small rooms one room too big uh, but they had already um done quite a lot um to it they had already had um a biomass boiler installed but they had this terribly hot and cold um conservatory uh on the back uh, couldn't see the see the garden couldn't get to the garden very well and um they uh, had a view straight out the back of, of, of a terrace of houses to, to, to the back. And um, they, we approached them about remodel, well, they approached us about remodeling the ground floor, but also turning the attention away to a gap between the neighbors' buildings where they actually looked down a field. And we got permission to put this, this is actually a SIPS structure um, on the back, uh, reconfigured the staircase, and it was just this amazing, um, amazing space now that half in the existing house, half out. You can see on the eaves line how we have pulled the, 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 the little extension out the back, put a roof light over that. And at the same time, upgraded the, uh, the fabric of the existing house with internal wall insulation as well, uh, totally transforming their use of the house and the look of it from the back. Next, please. So a simple extension can change how it works so you see on the left how it was and on the right how the the new kitchen has moved out from a tiny little galley into this lovely big open space and this by taking away the back we've actually upgraded all the back to to the highest modern standards and we did some internal wall insulation as well on the um on the sitting room end and reconfigured the house to work really well upstairs there was hardly any hardly anything and you've got this amazing space within within the back. And so that can, just by putting a super efficient thing on the back, can actually change all, all the nature of the of the end of the house uh, as well. Next, please. 
Uh, this is again another 1970s, like probably late 60s house, um, fairly bland, very poor performance, very poor air tightness, poorly ventilated. And these people had a, an idea that they wanted something um, very modern. So we do a survey of it and using photographs and things have done. So this is total encapsulation now of an existing house with a little bit of extension here and there, particularly on the back. So again, you can transform your house whilst upgrading the performance. So here we had external wall insulation, which we then clad uh, with timber and render and a bit of metal um, to, to, to make it look like a modern and perform like a modern, a modern house, still with a, a gas boiler they replace the existing floors uh, with insulated floors and the um, ever-present mechanical kind of ventilation and this is to there so again almost anything you've got can become almost anything you want and obviously we're way beyond the uh, the 20,000 of the original of, of the first house I showed you for retrofit next please uh, so this is the the design for it tr transforming the way the building worked on the inside at the same time and then whilst you're doing that work you've got the opportunity to upgrade all the performance uh, uh, of the house as well and next so I had a penchant for orange here for some reason but uh, again it's taking that ordinary house and turning it into something they love and not everyone will love this um, but it's for them not not everyone else and it's whatever your version of these things are um, can be achieved uh, we like to think today on the first day you, you know, whatever your budget is you can have anything you want and then you have to go and try and hold on to that through the whole process which can be quite long and complex um, but in this case they're absolutely uh, delighted with this uh, this result on what was basically just an ordinary ordinary house and again I don't know what the EPC was like on this one but um, that view that's actually a view over Cannock Chase in Staffordshire and uh, that's the view from their bedroom and next nearly there now uh, this uh, is taking it to a complete extreme now and so just an overclad we've actually taken um, a 60s uh, chalet style um, dorm well chalet style house uh in wolverhampton uh with a gar double garage next to it uh very, very poor use of space upstairs within us within the uh within the roof which starts at, at first floor uh floor level and next and totally cleared out the ground floor wrapped the whole ground floor in insulation absorbed the garage into uh, the space and then taken the roof off and put a whole first floor on there so you actually get four bedrooms uh, and ensuite and all the facilities we want and in this case room for 10,000 books and growing uh, to be accommodated in um, effectively the fourth bedroom and the whole of the landing area um, uh, uh, 480 linear meters of uh, bookshelf was required um, and this takes it as far as we can and next please uh, so this was before and planning wise we had no comments from neighbours and no comments from the planners and it was designed to look like next. So again their idea of beautiful so this is we're into hundreds of thousands now you know it's, it's a complete transformation of something you have but for people we find that, that many people buy a house because they they, 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 they they just run out of things to look at you know so it's almost as I say whatever you've got can become whatever you want and in terms of this this actually came out again with a positive EPC by wrapping the ground floor with external wall insulation and render and the first floor was a SIP structure uh, to the same performance as a new house and this is what they achieve next please so that's it they reduce the size of the windows and things for um, privacy reasons which I think is a bit of a disappointment but they're absolutely over the moon with this again it won't be to everyone's taste but I say it's for you to do whatever you um, you want with your 
with your property or indeed your new build. But all the time it is trying to find strategies to increase the performance through actually tried and tested, tried and tested um, uh, methods of insulation, whether that's inside or outside, uh, air tightness, which again stops all those drafts coming through ventilation whilst you can have what's called passive stack ventilation where you allow air in at low level and take it out at a high level it's very difficult to recover the heat from that so we do prefer uh, a mechanical ventilation with heat recovery system which more than pays for itself in terms of the energy it uses um, you then have good daylight if you live in a bungalow a few roof lights will will, will, will totally daylight the space during the daylight hours meaning you don't have to use electric light you use low energy light fittings we've got in our own home we've got uh 99 i think uh leds which you know don't don't ever um don't ever pop uh run at three at three watts or something like that you know our power consumption is very very low for a big house and um and then you meet any remaining demand with uh, low energy uh, uh appliances or, or um heating systems which again are not rocket science but there is a cost to a lot of these things so i think that's the final slide michaela yeah, so um, let's just so just pop that back to the previous one, and um, yeah, that's uh, I'll take some um, questions if you wish. It's much appreciated, Kevin. Um, I'm going to try and get a, a view where we get everybody in, so that possibly we can see um, people's hands if they raise their hands. And um, Makayla, can you? Um, stop that. Ah, oh, that's pretty good, I think. Um, do we have any questions for Kevin? Um, if I can't see your hand, unmute yourself and say who you are. Um, Sue has got a question. Ah, uh, Sue. Hey. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Kevin. Um, oh. Have you done any work on retrofitting in a conservation area? I'm in a village, um, Cookham, which is just outside Marlow. No, and well. there, are sizable, there are a sizable number of um, historical buildings. Um, and it's trying to find people to help the villagers um, realise what's available in terms of glazing, secondary glazing and retrofitting. Have you had experience of? Yeah, so a, a good number of things that we do are in our own house in a conservation area as well. Um, if something's already beautiful on the outside, it's very difficult to 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 to, to, to clad the outside. The, the ideal yes. thing is to clad the outside with insulation, like wearing a warm a warm overcoat uh, in the mm -hmm. winter, which unlike an overcoat, say, does keep you cool in the summer as well by keeping the heat out. Have you ever stayed in, uh, we stayed in the south of France in a barn conversion and we were in the attic and, and the roof was just a big radiator in the day and you couldn't, yeah. get, it, it stops that sort of thing going on. But it is a question of degree. So there are very high performance traditional windows. We were really, we had um, sash windows made here, but with double glazing and very good ceiling uh, done on yeah. them to the highest performance we can do. So it is a question of degree. It doesn't mean, as I say, um, eco design and low energy design doesn't have a look. It can look like a beautiful leaded light cottage. It can look like or whatever you want so it is a question of how far one can go you can do an awful lot on the inside many properties and i've got one at the moment that well we're actually thinking of buying instead of ours it's beautiful on the outside and terribly decorative and beautiful on the inside cornices and picture rails and beautiful skirtings and the thought of taking all that off and put it's not listed but taking all that off and putting it back so we're having to think very carefully what we do in this case 
there are mm. some products like uh, aerogel which is the sort of insulation they use on the space station but it's yeah. two to three hundred pounds a square meter <laughs> but mm -hmm. it's the same thickness as plaster so you can actually lose it within the wall uh mm -hmm. the house the victorian house i showed you earlier the the uh, the guy who owns that works for a company that does produces that material and he's actually using it on his inside front wall um but oh, it's right. desperately expensive you know so yeah. there are um we're trying to think we're going to have to compensate with other strategies like having very good attic insulation very good floor mm. insulation and then it's controlling the moisture so moisture is the reason you get black mold um mm. even if you're quite well ventilated if you've got furniture in corners you can get black mold behind there it's not because there's rising damp or anything it's just because you've got moist air you know just by cooking breathing um mm. coming in with wet shoes or, or, or wet coats or whatever um laundry and it just the air doesn't move and the wall's relatively cold in those corners and and it just doesn't move and it just you end up with you know you find it in fitted wardrobes and things like that so it's a matter of that air quality and why we like mechanical ventilation is it takes all that moisture away and recovers the heat from it so um but a system is the one in that bungalow the bungalow in highgate was um about four thousand pounds you know and that's suddenly a lot of money for people to do mm. but when you look at the paybacks on some of these things windows will never pay you back well unless you live to about 150 uh, there's about a 75 year payback on new windows but you don't expect your car to pay you back for instance you don't expect uh, and the increased comfort uh and they do get reduced running costs but i mean some windows need replacing anyway but um and you can use secondary glazing systems some friends have just they've got beautiful leaded lights in their house and i said oh, i thought you were getting um, secondary glazing in here and he said we have <laughs> and it was so beautifully done by this company not stupid mm -hmm. expensive but not like those big sliding aluminium things one used to see and then they were just terrible yeah um, terrible things and you get compensation between the two these beautiful things that keep things beautiful on the inside and on the outside so mm. if the strategies are there the products are there um and what we're trying to do is try and instead we could, we could be really deep green and do rammed earth and round pole construction and hempcrete and things but we're trying to find a path through for the average the average people in the average house working with the average builder mm on the uh, out of the local builders merchant not importing mm. some system from latvia or or, or a container mm. from china or something we want the everyday to become normal because the retrofit um challenge is enormous you know that we've all had our energy bills go up recently and it's focused people's minds but the government's committed to a carbon reduction carbon and energy don't necessarily go together you can have uh, a low energy system which is quite high carbon uh, but um, they've committed to this 80 percent reduction by 2050 which means around 20 million of the 25 million houses that exist have to be retrofitted by then it's actually coming up to nearly two per minute seven you know 24 mm. hours a day seven days a week need doing and we're doing about 10,000 a year not us personally uh, it's not um it's it's hundreds of thousands a year you know if you look at how many how long there is now till 2050 and really we need to do whole streets at a time but i don't know what is going to give most of our clients are values driven values driven um uh, owners uh we apply those uh lessons to social housing uh as well and mass housing where we can and for enlightened developers but it is a massive task uh and the funding is the biggest thing uh how do you find this money because there is no mechanism in 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 conveyancing to make people um to make people upgrade their homes you you couldn't buy an f-rated fridge or or hopefully wouldn't buy an f-rated fridge or an f-rated car or an f-rated washing machine comes to your biggest asset your home oh it doesn't matter does it you know suddenly we can just buy you know a client again has brought me a house with an epc of one where do we go from here you know but you can buy it you know and it's like at least cars inefficient cars are are scrapped 
houses are rarely scrapped. We we have about a two percent churn in buildings a year at most, um, and they're just all hanging around, you know. And but people are never going to be in it long enough to get the benefit, and the estate agents aren't valuing them up. But we had someone bought a seven unimproved seventies detached house, seven hundred thousand pounds, and they discovered. They need to spend 700,000 on it to do what they want. And it isn't worth the money that they've paid for it because it's it's not performing to the standard. And people will one day wake up to say, well, I want an A-rated house, please. Why would I buy even the things that are being built probably where you live will all need retrofitting? Yes, thank you, Kevin. Uh, can, can I just add something to that with regard to the payback? The thing that people don't often think about is the fact that if you improve your house significantly, it actually increases the value of the house, especially compared with the one next door, which isn't. So, yeah. you know, you're actually investing in something which is probably worth more at the end of the day. Um, second question, please. Bill Anyone? has his hand up. Hello, right. guys. Uh, you mentioned. Uh, Aerogel, I've come across SemperTap, which is £34 a square metre, 30% uh, reduction in heat loss. But my DIY shop told me about wall rock. The back door to my kitchen, I've got solid walls, right? Back door to my kitchen extension, drip water mould, at £10 a square metre, put up by using wallpaper. It's yeah. four millimetres thick, wall rock, foot by an right? It's four millimetres thick, wallpaper paste, sorted. No really. Wall. wall rock is absolutely amazing. Wall rock. Wall Can you share rock. that on the chat? Yeah, I'll, I'll put information on the chat. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Um, right. Next question. We've got time for another two or three. Anyone got their hand up? I can't see anyone at the moment. Trevor, Trevor Farmfield. Well, Trevor, you're on mute at the moment. Hi, Kevin, you can hear me all right? Yeah. Yes, can indeed. Yeah. Thank you. Um, when we met at the um, Smart Energy Show, I think you mentioned something about um, a location, was it in Swindon or somewhere where you, people could visit? Yes, um, it's the National Self Building Renovation Centre. It's about the size of a B&Q just off junction uh, 16 of the M4, just north of there. It's open seven days a week, but they have uh, regular shows and events there. And basically, they are set up to to uh, uh, educate people and link them to suppliers and consultants to understand self-build and renovation uh, to a very high standard. Even if you want to project manage your own project, they can teach you how to do that as well. Uh, it's just um, the uh, all the W's nsbrc.co.uk and it is a fantastic resource to 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 look up on both online and go there. Um, they've got everything from exhibitions of uh, modern methods of construction, show houses, a bit like the ideal home show, um, lots of displays for um, for uh, products, uh, many of them eco, low energy products like insulation, but all sorts of finishes, uh, building systems, uh, uh, rainwater harvesting, almost everything you could wish for. In fact, I have some clients got one in uh, in Shenley in uh, Hertfordshire, who is getting all of his products and services from people who exhibit there. Uh, we exhibit there, uh, and um, it is a fantastic resource. So nsbrc.co.uk, um, certainly worth looking up, even if you don't go there, but not too far from you either. Yeah, a good reason, a good reason to go to Swindon. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> right. Do we have any more questions? Anyone wish to query Kevin? No, I think no. Oh, Trevor's got another question. Yeah, just a quick one, Kevin. Um, yep. Cavity wall insulation got a bad name at one point in time. 
Yes, so rendered houses, not a problem uh, because water can't get through. The cavities existed, it's from the 30s, to prevent water penetration, not to give you an opportunity for insulation. So because solid walls were often the rain hits them, the rain soaks through brickworks full of cracks. So they were introduced for water to, to keep the moisture out, basically, and they were ventilating. You'll see air bricks at the bottom at the top to ventilate the cavity and get any moisture out that gets through. Uh, when you fill that up, obviously, you're now creating a gap between the two. Um, we um, we only really advocate the polystyrene bead, which is set in a matrix, which doesn't leave any paths through it for moisture to get for moisture to get through. So effectively, it's if I said it was in PVA glue, it's not quite right. But they are little polystyrene beads, which are generally made from recycled engine oil. So they're actually quite um, and and about two percent oil and ninety eight percent steam, um, and um, they're the ones that work. But I think things like the, the fibre ones we don't like using and certainly not cellulose, not in brickwork because it can become damp and just cause you more and slump to the bottom. And that did get a poor, a poor uh, uh, reputation, rightly so. And the polystyrene ones, are, they're, they're blown in, are they? They are pumped in, so they have to oh. actually create a grid of holes. So they usually go through the um, through the uh, cement joints uh, between them, but at, at quite close centres, and they have a system that shows how it's actually flowing on the inside. Uh, we had a rendered house before, and we had it done, and you do have to have the hull house painted again afterwards. In our case, because um, because it's full of holes, you know, it's like it's been uh, been shot at, shall we say? But uh, <laughs> it, it, it certainly works now, and that's what we've used up in Highgate. OK, Kevin, thank you. Did Sue have your hand up? Um, yes, Kevin, I'd be very interested to know if you were able to find out from your friend, uh, which company did the secondary glazing? Yes, I, I believe it was Granada, but I will okay. find out for you. Uh, Granada, they're in uh, West Midlands somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, Granada secondary glazing, like the TV company. Yeah. Or the, or the city in the in Spain. Um, <laughs> yeah. I know they're a very good uh, firm, but there is it might have been another one whose name I can't recall at the moment. But uh, Granada certainly do good products. Thank you. I think we'd possibly come to the end of the questions if that's all right with everyone. Um, so coming to the end of the talk, um, can I first of all uh, thank Michaela for helping with the slides and everything else? Thank you. Uh, Michaela. Obviously, more importantly, Kevin, for giving you an excellent talk, uh, really interesting. Anyway, let's have a quick round of applause for Kevin. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you, Kevin. Much You're very welcome. Hopefully, we'll see you all at the next meeting we have in April. Yeah, and um, people are free to email me if they wish, because next steps are the important things for people and they need to know where to turn. So uh, it's finding out um, how to put people in touch with the right people, but certainly NSPRC is a good start. OK, if, if, if people haven't got Kevin's email address, just email me at Marlow Energy Group uh, and I'll pass that on to you, if that's all right. On the end of the presentation, if you look at, up again, so. Yeah, you'd, you'd have to look at the recording. <laughs> yeah, I see, right. Fair enough. Good. OK, well, I will say adieu to everyone. Uh, thank you. Much appreciated. Thank you and for having me, Joe. Au revoir. Au revoir. Au revoir.